Howdy Tubers, welcome back to the SCADA part two. So we're gonna attack, in this video, we're gonna talk about the actual real physical sensors they're gonna use, uh, what they measure, uh, the different kinds of electrical outputs that they use, the inputs they require, and other filtering systems that are needed to make those sensors work. We're gonna talk about the digital analog converter. We're using a thing called a lab jack, uh, and probably a few other things. I shot most of this video over a year ago. If you catch that, good catch. Let's do it. So sensors come typically in two different styles of electrical output. Uh, they're either zero to five volts or they are four to 20 milliamps. And this means that as the pressure increases, it increases the voltage between, uh, typically they would start out at like half of a volt up to four and a half volts. They don't actually go quite zero to five, uh, but it varies the voltage depending on the input, you know, the more pressure, the higher the voltage, or they come in a four to 20 milliamp, meaning that the higher the pressure or higher the level or higher whatever you're reading, in this case, it would be a tank level. Uh, it increases the amount of current that can pass through this. So we're gonna start with this sensor. It's a four to 20 milliamps. It's a little bit more complicated than the other one. Let's get the complicated one out of the way. So what we've got here is a power supply uh, this eventually will be roughly 24 volt power supply. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. But we've got a positive clip here, alligator clip. We're going to apply a positive to the red. Uh, we need uh, to put this meter in series to measure current. And so I'm going to use a few jumper wires here. Uh, this would be the positive of the meter and then the negative lead of the meter goes back to our power supply. So it goes power supply, sensor, meter, back to power supply. Pretty straightforward there. Now we'll turn this on, we'll, we'll uh, set it to milliamps here, and we will begin increasing our voltage. And that's the wrong, let's see. Okay, so we'll run this up here to about 24 volts. Now, something to notice here, we're reading four milliamps. So this would be uh, basically your zero, uh, 3.99, roughly four. Uh, one of the important things to pick up here is that we can vary the voltage across the sensor wildly. Uh, we're going all the way from 13 volts all the way up to 31, and the current doesn't change. That's one of the really good things about the four to 20 milliamp sensors is that the input voltage is not important. You can have a, these are nominally 24 volts, but you can simply have a 24 volt battery, uh, whether it be a stack of AA batteries or however, and if the batteries are kind of overcharged or get way undercharged, the sensors still read uh, very correctly. Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to simply blow into the end of this sensor I'm gonna take this off and try to keep from widening all our wires up here. And we should be able to see this change drastically with just a slight pressure. That's about as hard as I could blow. Uh, got us up to 12 milliamps there. I'm gonna put this aside. We're going to go back to the other sensor for a minute and then come back to this at the end. So this is the interface that will allow these sensors and whatever inputs to this to communicate through a network back to your computer. This is a digital analog converter of types. It also has PLC capabilities. Uh, we don't care about that. For this video, don't worry about anything from here back as far as the computer stuff goes. We're just talking about the wiring and stuff right here uh, to allow these sensors to communicate with this. So I need to talk about digital versus analog signals. So a digital signal is a switch, like a light switch. The light goes on or the light goes off. An analog signal is much like a dimmer in a light. It allows you to control the voltage to it and you have a variable, um, a variable signal. It's not just on or off. Uh, an analog signal would be anything like a tank level, a pressure sensor. It would be anything that you would read other than an on off switch, whether it be a, you know, you can have digital pressure switches, you know, the something comes on at XPSI, goes off at XPSI or whatever. Anyway, the VS here is the chassis voltage. This would be the five volts coming in on the USB port uh, right there. Of course, ground is ground. 
Uh, these two are actually analog outputs. Uh, you could use these to go to a VFD or something if you want to control a motor speed or some kind of a, you know dimmer system or whatever. This is a variable voltage output. You control the voltage uh, through the software and the computer. Chassis voltage ground. We've got analog in 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are analog inputs. Uh, they have a voltage range of negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts. Um, if you apply a voltage to them, you can read that in your computer. We'll talk about how to do that in the last video, uh, but, but this is analog input. Here we got flexible in, out, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These can be a digital out, a digital in, or an analog in. Uh, you can have these where they output a voltage, like to control a MOSFET, if you wanted to switch something off and on. Uh, you can use them as a digital input if you've got something like a float switch or something when a, when a level gets so high or a temperature gets so hot, uh, it opens or closes. Uh, these can read that. It can read them on and off. You can also set them up in the computer as a analog uh, input. Uh, the only difference then in this being an analog input in one of these is that this has a voltage limitation of 2.5 volts where this one's got a 10 volts voltage limitation. I don't know what this crap is and I don't care. I hadn't needed it yet. So the LabJack comes with this program called Kipling and it's a really good program. It's a little bit clunky, but it is uh, absolutely works great. I don't want to get into it, how it works. We're not talking about anything from here back towards the computer, but it gives you a, vid a, dig a uh, visual display of the inputs of the thing and we'll be able to use this kind of in the manipulation of these sensors and to talk about how the sensors work. These these sensors like this, zero to five volt sensors, have a dedicated output voltage. But these are very, very simple. You can simply use the voltage that is right here on the board. We've got a red wire is positive, black wire is the negative. The green wire here is the voltage output, and we will tie the voltage output to analog input zero. So you can see on the screen here, the voltage coming in to analog output zero is now 0 0.482 volts. If I blow on this sensor, I can change that voltage. If I suck on it, it'll actually go down below, below half a volt. all the way to zero. So this is the entirety of making this sensor work with this. It's very simple. Okay, now back to this sensor. This sensor is a little bit more complicated. There's no way to have the lab jack read directly from this current. You've got to change that current into a, a voltage so this can read it as a voltage. Now to do this is pretty simple, but it takes a little bit more uh, a little bit more stuff. So we're going to remove our meter here. We'll go ahead and put this back just for visual representation and circuit. So we've got a power supply here. The power supply has voltage that comes out of it. It goes to the sensor back from the sensor, back to the power supply. There is a circuit here that is slowly moving current through it. You need to think of electricity like a flow of water. Voltage equals pressure and current equals flow. And so if we wanna be able to tell how much flow is traveling through this hose of water, one easy way to do it is to put a restriction in it and then measure the pressure differential on either side of the restriction sort of like a kink in a hose. A partial kink in the hose, the more flow goes through that kink, the more pressure is going to be on the back side in, in relation to the front, the more delta the pressure. Now to accomplish this, we're going to put in series here, in this circuit, we're going to put a resistor. This resistor has got a resistance of 100 ohms which means for every amp of current you pull through it, it will have 100 volts across it. So we will have a maximum current here of 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps times 100 equals two volts. So at maximum depth, whatever this was rated at, I think it was like five meters or something, 
whatever that comes out to in freedom units. Uh, this would have two volts across this resistor. Now we can measure that with this very easily, just like we did with the other sensor. Let's get some jumper wires and do it. I had to sacrifice one of my jumper wires here for your viewing entertainment. Now one thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure that you keep your ground plane all the same. You know, you can't put this resistor in the hot side over here because then you would be supplying 24 volts to the lab jack, which would blow up one of the inputs, either the 10 or two and a half volt inputs. Uh, but we'll take the ground here. I should have made these different colors. It'll connect to the ground side of the resistor and the, uh, and the other lead will attach to the other side of the resistor. I don't really, it's not really called a ground side. Okay, so we've connected it here to analog input zero. Uh, it's reading about four tenths of a volt, uh, slightly less, and that would correlate 300 ohm resistor to four tenths of a volt. Now, if I blow on this sensor, just like before, it will read uh, the change in voltage. So appreciate you watching. The next video, part three, we're gonna talk about these circuit boards. Uh, it went through several different versions before I was able to make one and not make a mistake on it. That's pretty much how that went. Uh, it's gonna be next.